you. Um, I normally give kind of quite serious lectures about what we're doing because it's quite interesting the fact that we, uh, we act as a, a, a kind of collaborative tool for a lot of different um, artists, visual artists in particular, digital artists, and we do a lot of interaction work and responsive environments, etc. And I just want to talk to you about a couple of things and play you a couple of pieces. Um, try and keep it as, co as succinct as possible. Um, and then hopefully have a chance for a little um, talk afterwards. But obviously I come from a record production back background, electronic music. I formed the Human League in 1978, which is before most of you were born, I presume. Um, and our first single, Being Boiled, was brought out that, that year. So it's 31 years since my first record release. <coughs> I was always very interested with the early Human League. We actually had to, used to have a live show with, um, with uh, projections. And we actually probably the first group in the world to have a full-time, equal weight member of the group who was a, whose job was to do visuals. He um, even ended up writing some of the songs at some point, which is beyond me. But um, uh, So we've always had a kind of, always been involved in a kind of multimedia world to a certain extent, even though in those days it was just um, carousel projections. Um, and in the last eight years, been, uh, we created a company called Illustrious with Vince Clark from Eurasia <coughs> to exploit this new three-dimensional surround sound uh, technology that we've co-developed. And um, that's Illustrious. And what we do is create three-dimensional, we call it living sound environments. They sound more real than normal to assist our clients uh, or, or the artists we work with to articulate their ideas to an audience in an emotionally engaging and memorable way. And we work in all so kinds of different fields, ranging from obviously the sound art end right through to architectural collaborations, trying to animate spaces, uh, <coughs> um, a lot of live events, a lot of lecturing, a lot of education. Uh, but also we've done projects, for instance, with the Royal Ballet in the Limbury Theatre, uh, where we've integrated uh, choreography with actual movement of sound in space. Um, and uh, we use it, we've used it in theatrical contexts. We've used it, we use it for, uh, for, as I mentioned, education and research. Um, we also use it for commercial reasons. Uh, we we uh, use our knowledge of animating architectural spaces uh, for retail environments, for instance, and also uh, to try and persuade companies to uh, regard sound as a, uh, a real <coughs> consideration rather than something that's parachuted in, in at the end of a design process um, to integrate every way that they touch the, the public and their own internal communications should be integrated. So we cover quite a lot, lot of stuff. Um, and the techniques we use <coughs> are based on the system that we've installed in here tonight. It's just one version of it. It can be any size you wish with as many speakers as you want. Uh, but generally, it's two rings of speakers, one high in a space and one low. Uh, so it's like normal surround sound in a cinema, except it's on two planes, so you've got a height axis as well. And within the confines of where the speakers are, we can actually move 16 different uh, streams of sound around at 25 frames a second in any direction you wish. Um, and at the front end, we use a, a sequencer called Logic, uh, but you can use anything, frankly, that's a time-based um, sequence, sequencer. So you can, you know, for instance, with the AV lab in the next few days, I'm not going to be here, but Tom, my assistant, will be here. Um, if anybody is involved in that, they will be able to use very easily uh, pour in their own content into, the, into this system and actually be able to create very quickly, because uh, it's very easy to use, um, amazing three-dimensional uh, sonic sculptures, really. Um, here's a screen grab of some of the technology. In fact, I'll show you the animation. It's probably uh, an easier thing to grasp. Um, 
if you look at this grid, it kind of symbolizes halfway up this room, about where your heads are. And the different colored balls moving around symbolize the different sound streams moving around in space. And um, as you can see, some of them are above the this kind of center point of the room, some of them below. And I'm going to play you examples of stuff, some stuff that we've uh, created using this system. The interesting thing about this is you can build a composition in three dimensions visually. So it's like a synesthetic piece of composition. Uh, it enables you to check where things are in space and uh, cross-reference and build things that are balanced in, in spatial terms as well as sound and volume terms. Um, I think I'll play you a piece from the first project that I'm going to talk about, um, which is, it would be um, Mario de Vega, I suppose. <coughs> this was the biggest project that we've done so far, uh, which was in the centre of Mexico City, which is pretty bonkers, frankly. Um, it took two years to get together, 24 hours of content, 12 two-hour pieces, 12 different artists creating three-dimensional soundscapes over a 125 meter square area. That, that entire area uh, was covered with speakers, 28 speakers, 10 subs. Um, and we created the ability to move any sounds we wished at 25 frames a second across and up and down and around in any direction you wish um, within that space, which was frankly an amazing experience. Um, to, to actually work on something, a studio that's not quite as big as this, a production suite that we have in Brixton in London, and then here those, that spatialization exploded into a giant space and it actually worked, uh, was something that was mind-bending, frankly. Um, I'm going to play you a piece by a, a, mad, um, v, uh, a mad DJ guy called uh, Mario de Vega, Mexican guy. Um, as I mentioned this afternoon, fueled by cocaine and tequila. Uh, he edited this piece that took him a month to edit, and it's one mono track that was flying around this space very, very fast. And he actually spatialized this using a 3D joystick. I taught him how to use it in 10 minutes, and he did it all in one take, 40 minutes of it. <laughs> I actually somewhere have got a film of him doing it, which looks strangely like masturbation, frankly. Um, if you can imagine this kind of movement. and um, So it's probably best if I don't show you that. But um, I'm going to play it for you instead. <coughs> Turn it up. Get <laughs> 